today's commander, Mango. According to the description, Mango was a blood rider to a Dothraki call. He was technically a deserter, as he didn't want to join his call in death in the Nightlands. So he fled across the Dothraki seas and crossed the poisoned water to reach Westeros. Seemingly happy about the battles going on in Westeros, he had a great time in fighting. There are a lot of things here quite unfamiliar mentioned to us. And at first, what is a call? Well, calls are the leaders of the Kalasar, and a Kalasar horde is pretty much the equivalent of a nomadic tribe. The call we know from the series is called Drogo, and he led the largest Kalasar of all times, 40,000 strong. Then the Blood Riders were the guardians of the call, and they were like his brothers. They guard and accompany the call everywhere and share what is his, but never his horse. Sometimes Blood Riders become co which is something like a minister, in charge of specific components of the Kalasar. They refer to each other as blood of my blood. Now there is ancient tradition that when a call dies, the blood riders have just three missions remaining. Firstly, they must avenge his death. Secondly, they must escort the Khaleesi, which is the call's wife, to Vaz the Trek to join the Dosh Kaleen. And thirdly, they must join the call in debt to accompany him in the Nightlands. And the Nightlands are the afterworld in Dothraki belief, also known as Raishi Ajalani in the native tongue. In order to be able to get there, the body must be burned in a funeral pyre. It is a major insult to the dead to leave his or her body unburned. Now this is the point where Mango drew the line and breaks an ancient tradition. Obviously now he will be a Dothraki fugitive and not be welcome there anymore. So he fled across the Dothraki Sea, which is not really a sea, but a vast step of low green grass plains, which look like a sea from afar. The grass plains are ideal for the Dothraki, and they are a tribe heavily relying on horseback riding to move around. Afterwards they cross the poisoned water, and that is not really a place. They refer to the ocean as the poisoned water, due to the salt concentration, which makes it impossible for their horses to drink the water. So in fact Mango actually just crossed the narrow sea, separating Astos from Westeros. Now Mango can be quite easily obtained for everyone in the event called Alliance Conquest. If your alliance managed to secure at least 5 victories each season, you can have him gold within 3 months or 3 seasons. His character model is wearing the Arak, a traditional Dothraki crescent moon shaped curved blade and is an equivalent to the well more known Egyptian Kopesh. The rest of the gear is more traditional and also includes a shoulder band, which often would be used as well to hold an arrow quiver. His other blade is a simple curved short sword. For specializations, his active skill is called Blood Rider Raid. This skill is used in rebel camps, Expedition Beyond and PvP to do extra damage against the enemy. His other specializations are Castle Building, which is a really very strange skill to have for the Dothraki, as they live in tents. And then comes Night Spirit and Night's Watch boosting your cavalry attack and defense. These are quite decent skills, especially if you use cavalry as frontline or in defense. If that is true, Mango definitely should be placed on the wall. His gallop away ability reduces the defense of the enemy if it's below 50%. Setting him opposite of the enemy commander in Weibo trials would help out a lot provided you save the skill before usage until the enemy commander is below 50%. The long ride gives him a stacking attack bonus each time an enemy is killed. This could help out a lot in the training rounds as well, even though Ira's list is a lot more effective. The skill Blood Rider adds defense and restores might. Restoring might allows him to use the gallop away more often, however adding defense isn't really effective, because his low health and defense doesn't make him suitable for frontline. The Great Stallion's Blessing adds more damage to his soldiers, which adds to his already very high prowess. Again, only Arya has higher prowess when it comes to free-to-play commanders. When it comes to stats, his prowess, attack and crit are insanely high. When it comes to crit, he shares the top position with Soren and Arslan of all the free-to-play commanders. This makes him highly effective in countering enemy infantry rebel leaders. Overall, he's a good backline damage dealer, effective on the wall, in cavalry formations or countering infantry. When it comes to friendship he scores really low and not because his overall stats are bad but mainly because Arya and Rob also require weapons and have much better stats than him. Provided that 
get him to at least level 20 and then focus on the others first. I do hope you liked this commander of the week. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and see you very soon.